What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo. Joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, how you doing? Good. Good, good, good. Busy week, but uh, no complaints. We got a lot to talk about. Yeah, man. Let's start off. Let's get right to it. Boba Fett, episode number five. This has been a... A love hate relationship. <laughs> and I was watching it, and that episode for me was like so much fun to watch. Not that it was exciting, but it almost make it almost made you feel like a kid watching something spectacular happening on screen. No action, a little bit more understanding of what's to come. Uh, And then you're instantly reminded that you're watching a Boba Fett show. And we were talking before the show and I said, I was disappointed a little bit in this, in this uh, episode, despite loving it is that it made you forget about Boba Fett. You know? This is the type of stuff we should be feeling about Boba Fett. Yet Mandalorian takes all that sense of wonder wonder and, and, and being in the Star Wars world. And not to say that Boba Fett is not, you know, but it's just not as exciting. Again, we've had our conversations about what we we thought this was going to be. Most, most, most people thought this was going to be. Yet this is sort of a slow burn. And based on how it ended, I came to a conclusion of what the rest of this season is going to be. Brian, what are your thoughts on this episode? And then I guess we'll talk about where the season of Boba Fett ends. Yeah, look, I mean, I, I, think, I think Mandalorian season 2.5 is awesome. <laughs> I think. Word, I'm telling uh, you. Look, I, I think this, as, a, as an episode of television, it was awesome. Uh, right from the start, you get the music, door opens, he, he's going after the bounty. He breaks out the dark saber. More on the dark saber in a second. We get, and then just as I felt, and I, if you go back to one of our pods, I think I voiced this concern way back when we were talking about this Boba Fett show. There's this moment because he's inside the butchery or, or the slaughterhouse or whatever, and then all of a sudden it cuts to like you realize he's in space, and you're like. Is this feeling of I'm home? Yeah. Because Star Wars is space, right? Yeah, and like, yeah, yeah. And first off, that was a tricked out, cool place that they had. That, Yo, I thought I was like, this is what design. Halo is supposed to look like. <laughs> <laughs> so that was super cool. But then it was like, oh, like I'm back in space. And like, this is where this universe has always thrived. And, you know, we can get into all the details, but it's shot really well. The action's really good. As you said, the exposition. There's a, the armor goes on a little long, in my taste. You get a lot uh, of history there with one? Bo-Katan. Okay, okay, okay. okay. The armor. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah, kind of yeah. giving you the Bo-Katan history, which is clearly like, a, this is the prequel to season three. So this is what you yeah. need to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a little long. It's a little, a little tedious, but... Yeah, look, and then I think the, the montage where they're assembling his Naboo, his custom Naboo fighters is, is really cool. So as an episode of television, this is great. Yeah. The problem is in reminding you of everything that is so excellent about The Mandalorian and how good the ideas have been in that show, it kind of drives home what's lacking in the Book of Books. And it just, everything from like seeing Mandalorian in his full armor, you know, doing his thing to, yeah, we're, we're in space, we're in these new places and new worlds we haven't seen before. 
um, to the to the whole, you know, this is the way, and sort of the you get reintroduced to the to the Mandalorian, the remnants of the Mandalorian race. All of it works, and then you wind up back in Tatooine, and there's Fennec Shan, and you're like, oh yeah, we really have to go back to this because, yeah. you know, it's like a, I understand the choice of they wanted to make sure they reminded you of what is out there, but in doing so, I think they kind of undercut. The show that they're trying to get us to buy into. For me, I think one of the favorite parts that I watch over and over again is the him trying out the new wit. Um, the process of making it, like I said, yo, there, there was there was nothing like jump out your seat exciting, but it was just more like you almost felt like you were along for the ride. Yeah, and experiencing what he was experiencing, he was saying, "Oh, this is crazy." You know what I'm saying in terms of what he was riding and what most people feel when they get into something powerful and fast. It made you, if you've done that before, you understand where he's coming from and what he's, and it just made you feel connected. Um, and it looked and, good, right? So yes, Bryce Dallas yeah, yeah. Howard directed it, and the effects look good, right? The callback to Beggar's Canyon, which is mentioned in the original Star Wars movie and then shown basically in the pod race in Phantom Menace. But, like, you know, the effects look good. The ship looks good. Like, the Darksaber looks amazing. And it's like, yeah, it's just sort of in my mind, it was like we had that hokey street race in Mos yeah. Espa, which looked really kind of cheap. And then, like, you see this, and you're, you're like, how is this the same kind of production budget in the same show but you know anyway I think like I said Bryce Dallas Howard has directed a couple of the episodes of Mandalorian I thought this episode was directed really well at the visuals and the angles and it, it, it just worked so yeah it will be a shame when we get to the end of this season and we're like the best episode of the season was the episode <laughs> where that did not appear that's gonna be wrong yo it's, it's, it's where we're at though yeah that's where we're at um yeah. the way this show ended obviously to what this is what it told me in terms of where we're heading with the final two episodes. We expect this war, they're building up this war he's supposed to have. He already set the stage of what the deal is in order for him to be running this spot. I'm, to, I'm gonna take care of all your problems, right? He's gonna require the services of the Mandalorian, but the Mandalorian already stated he has to go see somebody. That's pretty much he has a couple of things that he has to do he has to go um redeem himself in the waters of mandalore i forget the name of the spot yeah well i think that's that's season three okay that, i think that whole device is set up as like to give right so season one and two in the mandalorian they kind of took this idea of hey let's go from planet to planet let's protect let's retrieve and protect Grogu. that's been the theme and then along the way there's some side adventures yeah. this episode clearly was pointing him toward a new main quest which was kind of teased at the end of season two which is hey you hold the dark saber you are the one who's supposed to kind of rule mandalore and so there was that implication of there's going to have to be this conquest and battle for mandalore mm -hmm. and now you get in this episode he's passed out effectively of of the society and his only way back yeah. is to conquer conquer mandalore and kind of get to that sacred place so that gives you direction immediately for season three in addition you get the grogu nod right which is that Gro grogu if he is going to be part of the show is going to be a different part of the show but he looks like he's still going to be part of the show because he says i have to go see someone little so yeah um, so that's clearly i assume who he's going to go see which then begs the question of time jump so what if is that meant to suggest that season three of The Mandalorian is going to basically chronologically occur between episodes five and episodes six and seven of Boba Fett? Because he's got to come back, right, for the finale, I assume, of, of this show. This is where I have this theory, Brian. This is a, wars don't last for the amount of time we're thinking that this war will begin and end. It takes some time. There's a lot of strategizing. There's a lot of 
politicking. There's a lot of things that occur during those times that are very interesting. You know, everybody watches old world war documentaries of what happened, who spoke to who, and all this other stuff. That's interesting. To see the possibility of Boba Fett going through that time um, in delivering what he said he was going to do, I'd like to see how that unfolds, but I don't think it's going to be quick. That's why I think, I honestly think that we don't get to see, I think the next season, we, that's why I say we're going to get another Boba Fett season two. This is, a, you might be right. this is, they're setting it up. This is the setup. We don't, we don't quite, we're not quite excited for what we've seen so far, but I'm, I'm interested. I want to see where the, I have to see the end. The cliffhanger for season two, I think the, is going to, is what going to, is what's going to be uh, having us talking about until we see it. I, hopefully just, hopefully we get to see it next year, at least, yo, we can't go uh, two, three years without it. I'm beginning. I mean, I'm definitely coming around to that view simply because if they try to put the whole war in the season finale, I can already tell you the season finale is going to be bad. We've seen this before with Hawkeye and the Winter Soldier. When they try to cram stuff into one episode, it never works. And so the scale of what the war on the pikes is supposed to be, you're right. It seems more like a season than a season finale. Yeah. But I do think that kind of underscores the sloppiness of this show, which is, it's very presumptive to, you know, like, Loki knew they were getting a second season, but the first season's tight. Yeah. Like, it, it, it's no different than the movies, right? We always say, like, it's great if you have an arc and a trilogy in mind, but you gotta, you gotta stick that first movie. And th this show is, I don't know, I mean, I, you know, I, I text you this, I'm always saying, I want a new show room, man. I'm not, I'm not happy. Like, I feel like this show should have been better. Yeah. I feel like it could have been better. And here's another episode where I'm like, no Robert Rodriguez meant a better show. And if he was the one who was kind of at the controls of how to lay out the pacing and editing and the timing and the setup yeah. of all this, yeah, I got to be honest, like, I'll stick with it because it's Star Wars and it's Boba Fett. I think it could have been executed better. And I think people are going to be left disappointed if we get to the end and we don't actually see like any kind of, you know, big battle or war or payoff for that. If we're made to wait a whole other season, I, think I get why, what... but I don't think it's going to go over. Well. I think so. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to probably go. I think depending on how they end this, man, it has to end with a banger. It has to end with a banger. We got two more episodes left, right? So what's... Now I think I would assume that's happening is him preparing for his this quest, right? To 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 accomplish something that other houses haven't been able to do or even have or even considered it because they're so outmatched or whatever the case may be. And Boba Fett is doing an impossible task, but if he gets it done because of his confidence and what he's done in the, in the past, the, the, well, he knows what he can do, you know? And this is not this, again, we said this over and over, this is not the same Boba Fett from the last time we saw him in Return of the Jedi. A different Boba Fett came out that joint, you know? And um, I, 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 I want to see what happens. We 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 setting up the character. We setting up the situation. Now he has Black uh, Chris Hansen. Now he's gonna get Mandalor uh, the Mandalorian. But is he gonna be here now? Because he said I gotta go do something first. Boba Fett ain't got time to wait. He's gonna plan the, that's this situation out and make certain, I guess, or form certain relationships in order. For him to be, have his plan set, have the people, he's not going to, he, Boba Fett, I don't, at least I don't think he's been the type of dude um, that goes into stuff unprepared. He's capable, but he wants to, you know, he has, this is a big, tall task. And I think we're going to see the preparation for that. And it's going to end with a, with a season two cliffhanger. And we're going to come back, obviously. And I think the second season is going to be amazing. 
I hope it is. Um, I also wonder, you know, Mandalorian season three, we, we, we know is, is coming. I wonder if part of what we got this week is a function of the way they wrote and mapped out Mandalorian season three didn't have, because they usually do eight episodes, right, for that. I wonder if their season and their plan didn't have room for this. So they shifted this one into this series, kind of like how Boba Fett was introduced into the Mandalorian and then used as a jump off for the series last year. Like, I wonder if they did that very deliberately to be like, hey, we're going to give you that bridge because we don't have time to include it in season three. Um, so I wonder if there was a factor at, at all at work there. But um, yeah, I hope, I hope. But I think, I think this show does need to make improvement. And I think this episode really underscores the gap in entertainment and ideas between yeah. what the Mandalorian has built and where Boba Fett is right now. Yeah. But I love it. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Once I realized what was going on, I was like, all right, I'm just going to kick back and have fun because this is going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, it, was, it was dope. It was dope. It was a dope episode. It was a really like, wow. Like, I love the Darksaber, by the way. You know what? And, and I was, when, while you like were talking, physics? I was thinking, yeah, yeah. What I was. It's a great yeah. idea. Yeah, and, and this is the thing. The Mandalorian, he's like, this dude is focused. He's focused. But it's that feeling part of him. Like, the reason why he's... You understand the reason why he was so attached to Grogu because he saw sort of like himself alone uh, yeah. as a kid and him being left alone as a kid, losing everybody. He has to, you know... He was taken in and... He, he he was taught what he, he what he knows, and when he's using the dark sa- the dark saber, you, we already saw uh, a, a situ- in, I guess in his first action sequence, you know he cut himself, something an amateur would do. Yeah. Um. And so going through that sort of uh, I guess training and using it. She lets him know, you know, if this is not like any other sword, or it's not like something that you, I guess, use as a tool. It is like sort of part of you, and is it doesn't go by strength or any of that stuff. It's something deeper that he only felt with Grogu that he does he hasn't yet felt with the sword yet. So, well, it's interesting. Like it gives again another device of progression over the course of his next season, but. We've also, you know, very rarely seen a non-force sensitive individual wield the lightsaber with any regularity, right? So that's part of the, the gimmick here is like you have this this guy who has, has no connection to the force, but he's trying to master this like Sith. You know, so it, yeah. You, you know, it'd be dope if like Grogu starts like showing him stuff. It could be, <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. That would be dope. That would be dope, man. This is this is a. Listen, everybody can feel what they feel, and I understand what they feel. Um, but there's one. I think this is just one of these shows that you just don't uh, discard and, and and forget because of how it's gone so far. Again, this is not what everybody was expecting, and this is not. The, but this is not the same Boba Fett. So I, I I think as long as you understand that. And people are going to stick with it and see what else transpires, especially in season two, which I think is going to be amazing in my, in my opinion, if we, if we head down the route that I think, if, because this war ends in two weeks, I'm done. <laughs> that's <laughs> you right. Know what I'm saying? It's going to be bad. It's, it's going to be bad. It'll be a bad finale if that's what they do. Yeah. Yeah. So that's another conversation below what you guys think about uh, season, uh, episode five. Um, and where do you think this show is going to head? Do you think is, um, gonna, the war is going to end? He's going to complete his task and now Boba Fett is running something? Or we're going to see season two will, will be the war. It probably won't even be called the Boba Fett something. I don't know. But let us know in the conversation below. Um, let's try to keep the, the, the genres together because I was going to talk about the Batman. But let's get into something else. Um, Mortal Kombat 2 was announced. It was green lit. I don't care 
really? Because the the I, I I saw Mortal Kombat three times, not because I I saw it three times, because I was falling asleep throughout the asleep uh, throughout the movie a few times, so I had to watch it again and, and go back to the parts that I missed. It wasn't a good movie, and but people you know watched it on the streaming service. I believe this movie is going to be just on the streaming service, correct? Yeah. They're using it properly. And the hope is that it gets better. That's the only hope. That it gets better. I don't really Not much care lower about this. <laughs> you can't no, I was going to say, I guess, there, I guess there's Mortal Kombat Annihilation. It could go down to that <laughs> level. But like, there's not that many levels down from where they were. So. <laughs> Word up. <laughs> Word, but it's uh, funny. You, you, we just got done talking about you know Boba Fett season one being a setup for what we really want to see, and like Mortal Kombat was the definition of that. Like <laughs> a tournament movie with no tournament. <laughs> I'm talking about the tournament. So I, I mean, if we don't get a tournament in Mortal Kombat two, <laughs> I don't even know what we're doing here. <laughs> I know, right? I, but the, the, this is the thing about this. And why I don't care for it, and why I don't think it'll be as um, I don't think it'll be do better. I probably still enjoy the first one, and the first one was bad. You know, this belongs in a series, man. This belongs in a series. You want to win? You want to win? Do this as a series. Yeah, I agree. Develop these ca- these characters, man. Make this get to the tournament. But lead up to it and us getting to really liking these characters. I don't like these characters. I don't care about them. You know, and, and just this guy being Johnny Cage, just this, you know, it's not about that. I want to, because we don't know these characters in terms of their personality other than the animation movies that we've uh, uh, seen, the, the movies, and the characters that had no real backstory, sort of. You had just sort of a, a small synopsis of who these guys were. But we don't, you care about the fight moves and all that stuff, but you don't really care about them like that, you know? And I think a series would be better for, for, in order for people, in order for me to enjoy it. I don't know. Look, I mean, I think it's really simple. It's, if, you, if you're going to give us the tournament, the martial arts better be good. Yeah. We're owed that at this point because the yeah. fights were not that good in, in yeah. the first movie. Second thing is, well, I'm going to want to be a Lewis Tan hater here. That dude has to die in the opening scene. <laughs> he, he's the, that character was useless. The costume. You gotta... And like, to me, if you just want to, like, if you're going to bring Johnny Cage in, my only thing would be like, figure out a way to rescue Pung Lao's soul and get rid of this dude. And just yeah. go with the classic characters and give yeah. us the full turn. That's yeah. it. I mean, I'm not saying it because I think the actor, I'm just saying as a movie, that, that character added nothing. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Give us, give us the actual roster. They got an Iron Eagle him, Iron Eagle too, where the main dude. Yeah, just exactly. Died. There you go. And exactly. On the first joint, you were like, "Oh snap!" <laughs> but yeah, he got to go. I mean, I can't, yeah, you care nothing for the guy. But let's see, let's see. Let us know in the conversation below. Are you excited for Mortal Kombat two? I will watch it. On the streaming, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch, watch it because I want to see it works. better. Yeah, and a lot of people watched it. That's why it works. Yeah. Um. Listen, we've been talking about this. We've mentioned it. We briefly, briefly have talked about it, but we really haven't dived deep into this. Idris Elba. We've been hearing talks about this for quite a few years already if there's if there was any time to do it the time would be now why because the dude is getting older obviously right he's in his late 40s right there's no better yeah yo I that's why so. that, that's why this news is like a little bit curious if it's if it if it comes through. But go ahead. Because 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 the because they, the, they lose the opportunity, Brian. He's like the you've Idris Elba is perfect for this. It's Actually, perfect. I have to take it back. He's he he will turn fifty this year. My mistake. Okay, okay, yeah. Because the last time I saw him, he, he was yeah. like forty eight or forty nine, and that was probably that last year. But yeah, he's up there. You don't want. 
Listen, we don't want to get to a point where we're watching like a, a do over of Roger Moore when he was like super old. We don't want to see that. You do a kill wanna... Roger Moore, yeah. He was struggling. I see that. Yo, I don't want to see that, man. That was like you. <laughs> yo, I'm telling you, just look at it. Yo, he was old, yo. It was like, yo, for real, yo, y'all, y'all really what? Uh, but anyway, you don't want to get to that point. And right now is the perfect time to catch Idris Elba as James Bond. He's perfect for it. Now, if you do so, damn, how do you go back from that? Because I'm, I'm quite certain that I think his portrayal of this character is going to be different and it's going to, everybody's going to come see this. Because it's, it's history making. Right? So everybody's going to go see it. It's history making. And, and Idris Elba is a great actor. And you know he'll bring a different you know, it's always been, you know, you recast and each, each of these casts for James Bond have been a little different in, because they're different people and they're going to play it a certain way. He's going to be different in every sense of the word, I think. Um, and not to say he'll lose all the charismatic attributes that James Bond has in terms of picking up the ladies and, you know, having that. But he's, it's just going to be different in his delivery. And I think everybody will go see that. What are your thoughts? Yeah, so I actually think uh, I think the age is definitely a big consideration. Um, if they're intent on doing this, if he turns 50 this year, and they've kind of said they're a couple of years away. I mean, just do the math of how quick they could actually get this going. He's probably 52, 53 by the time they would shoot, shoot this. So my suggestion, if they want to hire him, and obviously I think it would be, you know, it would be great casting in the moment. My suggestion would be to do a simultaneous shoot on the trilogy. Yeah. It would be to actually do one director. I think one thing that actually wound up working in the end for the Daniel Craig iteration was the serialized storytelling, right? Yeah. So they didn't start out that way. But by the time we got to uh, No Time to Die, we had sort of retconned Casino Royale and... Um, all the other movies, all the movies into this one long string, right? And I think that actually worked. Uh, so I think if they went in knowing they were going to do that, shot the trilogy back to back to back, so that way it solves the age problem, right? He's not having to do three movies over ten years; he's doing three movies over one year. And then you put it out as like that's his run. Like his run is not going to be yeah. ten movies because he's too old. But it's a run. It has a start, a finish, and one storyteller with one set of writers and director. That's what I would do. And then you can recast it again, but it gives him that moment to like, he makes his mark on the character. These three films stand alone as a chapter in the James Bond lore and everybody wins. Yeah. That would be my recommendation if they're going to do yeah. it. Yeah, and it gives you a reason to get one out soon rather than, I mean, we were thinking five years from now, we'll probably get another Bond. There's a cast That's what they movie. were saying. Yeah. That's yeah. what the Broncos family yeah. was saying. Yeah. I think this move is to bring that a little bit closer in like probably two years, right? Yeah, um, I mean, it definitely could. It could also mean look, they get. I'm sure they get pitched all the time by writers and directors on, on what to do. Maybe somebody hit on something. Maybe somebody's like, "I want Idris Elba's Bond. Here's my take. Here's my story." And they were like, "All right, we got we got to maybe talk about pulling this together." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this is not coming out of nowhere. Somebody's talking about this actually happening. So. It is yeah, well, the good news is, happen. too, the good news is, too, like, Bond, if, especially if you're going to recast the character, you know, in this fashion, you don't really have to worry about fatigue, you know, in the sense of, we, we talk about with superheroes, like, another Batman, another Spider-Man, but, like, another Bond, especially if you go from Craig to Elba, just from a personality standpoint, you know, forget the representation part, I'm just saying the way they act, the way they want to play the character, yeah. you avoid all the fatigue issues. Because it's like, great, I get a spy trilogy. He's named James Bond, but I get a totally different take on it. I'll watch it. There's no yeah. reason to like, hey, I need five years to rest and then come back. Has he just ha ever had a billion dollar movie? Other than, you know, I think Ragnarok or, or uh, Etern not Eternal, uh, uh, Infinity War. Like him, Solo. Solo, no. I mean, I would say like, if you want to say where, I mean, Hobbs and Shaw was like 800 million. Okay. probably like he's obviously the lead bad guy in that so that's probably as close as he's been yeah because Heimdall's not a big enough character in the, in yeah. the, in the so yeah no no 
Not typically. This would be it. I yeah, think. probably. I think for sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Let us know in the conversation below what you guys think of this possibility of Jane, uh, James Bond uh, being played by Mr. Idris Elba. I think the time is now. I think is something that will happen. Most likely, we'll get an announcement in. Who knows? Probably in this summer, maybe. Who knows? Th- this year for sure. Predicting it. Nerd Gen is predicting. We're gonna get an announcement this year. Um, Brian, Mr. Dwayne Johnson says that training for this role is arduous. Do you care? I certainly don't. The reason, why I, the, re- the, the reason why I say that, Brian, is because you know the you know, we've been saying the rock as Black Adam forever. You know, we don't care about what kind of shape you're in. I'm not impressed by it. You're in shape, yo. You're in shape. How much more imp- in shape are you gonna look? You're not gonna go out bare chested. If you do, then I mean, I don't know, but I don't care. The rock, you're already a beefy human being, yo. We know what you're gonna look like. We've been wanting you to play this role over 15, 10 to 15 years ago. We've been talking about this. I don't care. Yeah, it's a little weird because, I mean, you're talking about someone who's been in incredible shape for 25 years, um, just to varying degrees, you know, and obviously that in and of itself is impressive. I mean, the, the guy works incredibly hard. But I don't think there's ever been any, this isn't a transformation. Uh, you know, this isn't Christian yeah. Bale going from the machinist, machinist to that yeah. begins, you know, right? Like this is, this is somebody who's athletic and huge and superhuman on his normal day. Yeah. Talking about extra training for, for a certain look they're going for inside the suit, which I'm kind of like, well, yeah, but you, you mean, there's nobody in Hollywood who's going to pop out of you. A skin, a, a skin tight suit more than the rock is at this yeah, point. Yeah. I don't really think that's a consideration. What, what I what I am looking for is can we have confirmation there's anyone else actually in this movie? I know we've seen casting <laughs> announcements. I know that we've seen that roster, but I have seen no evidence that there's actually someone else in this movie besides Dwayne Johnson. So I hope maybe I guess in that teaser there was somebody like approaching him in the tomb or whatever, but just I think it's the wrong path. I just, I got to go back to this. Like, I made this comment to you over text. It's like, when you look at the Avengers, and granted, that's a team-up movie, but like, when, but so is this. And so, like, when you look at the Batman, I love the, I love hearing people talk about actors, or actors talk about their director, talk about their writer, because no one likes talking, most people don't like talking about themselves, most people. <laughs> so I always like hearing, you know, Zoe Kravitz talk about Robert Pattinson. Yeah. Robert Pattinson talk about Andy Circus, and you see that there's this like camaraderie and this cross promotion that occurs on these projects, and like I get it, like Black Adam is going to be the Rock is going to be at the center of it. I, I get it, and I get why, but like to make this movie work the way he wants it to work, he's got to get us to buy into the world, and that means he's got to sell the other people in this movie. He's got a job for them a little bit. Sorry, like you know, you <laughs> maybe the people. Yeah, but you gotta let them. You gotta let them execute their finishing move on you once or twice yeah, yeah. in the lead up before you hit them with the rock bottom. And like he just nothing about this production has mentioned anything about or acknowledged Pierce Brosnan, Aldous Hodge, or anyone else who's in this movie. Yeah, like I can hear the interviews now of the other actors in this film. And all of them, oh man, the rock, oh man, the rock, oh the rock, the rock, the rock, the rock, the rock, the rock, the rock. And it's not gonna be them talking about their the you know, their 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 co-stars and what they're doing or how they did and how great they did. I don't know if we're gonna hear that. Cause all about all we've heard is him. It builds buzz though when it's like you start hearing a rumor leak out about like, hey, someone absolutely crushed performance like you're like you're like hey like there's word going around that like colin farrell has the penguin or something else and you've got to see that like 
that helps get a movie going. Yeah. It isn't always to double down on the person that everyone knows is going to be the center. Yeah. Hey. Let us know what you guys think of uh, the arduous training, Mr. Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. Let us know what you think about the promotion because we're obviously yeah. talking about the Batman a lot. And I can't think of a bigger contrast than how two yeah. movies in yeah. the same universe, DC universe, are being promoted. Yeah. Quick pitch. We got, I want to be doing a lot of this, these quick pitches. Uh, quick pitch, and Mr. Incredible, The Rock. That's you right there. That's you, Mr. Incredible. That's you right there. <laughs> That's you all day. If they decided to go live action, The Incredibles, you, Mr. Incredible. That's all day. Because it's not about you, my friend. <laughs> it's not about you. But good segue, though, into the Batman. Matt Reeves says, and what I found, I guess, so refreshing when you hear him talk about this very subject, he's skipping the origin story. If you saw that clip, Brian, you saw that clip that I don't think you've seen the whole cl that that clip that they put out. Have you seen it? I don't think so. No, I read I read his script, but not I read his transcript. But yeah, not that. Okay. If you decide you want to see it, because it's I, I I'll say that it's nothing. You won't be missing anything, but you're, you're going to be like, oh, my God, I can't wait. But you see where, why, in that scene, you already see the story of him, his origin story. You already see it. So we don't have to constantly, any, Mary said, it, you know, we've, we've seen it already a, a bunch of different times. They got shot. What more compelling? How compelling are you going to make that? You know, you know, you can't, you already seen it. Now let's, let's get to see what we haven't seen yet. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's why, listen, again, I don't care who you are. I'll go toe to toe with anybody. There's no bigger Batman fan than me for this movie. I'm its number one fan. And I've said it as soon as it was announced and I yo, I didn't even hear the synopsis, Brian. I didn't know what this movie was about. All I heard that Matt Reeves was doing and they casted Pattinson. And I said, this is going to be amazing. We're going to get the, the we're going to get something we've never seen before with the Batman. I said it before we even heard about what this movie was going to be about. And every time I read something, I was like, yes. Yes, yes. Brian, your thoughts on the decision on not to do this origin story in the film? I love it. I love it. It, it just, it, this movie continues, at least in the buildup, this movie continues to make, I think, all the right choices um, to make its own mark on the character. And I think this is just one more sign of respect, not just for the fans, because the fans are good, but I think it's a respect to the general awareness of society that Bruce Wayne's parents were killed. Yeah. And that caused it. In some ways, I think it's more powerful not to show it. Yeah. Because the movie's the point of the movie is to focus on his dealing with it in the aftermath. And so you'll still be surrounded by the after because remember he doesn't he build the bat insignia on on his chest from the like um, the, the, the gun. Weapon. yeah yeah so you're surrounded by this memory you don't need to see a literal blow by blow of this and we got the confirmation i was totally wrong so the actual runtime is 247 uh, okay. plus eight minutes of credits so okay. they got plenty of other stuff in this movie yes Eight Without six, of... dedicating five minutes to an origin story. Um, so I think it's fantastic. I think it's fantastic. 
And I think the fact that they confirmed that runtime just says to me the studio is all in. I mean, it is all in on this. I mean, if they're going to lead off with that kind of time, they are just convinced. Yeah, they oh, yeah. get you to the theater, and if you go to the theater, you're going to be so blown away that you'll go back because they're giving up show times. They're giving up show times yeah. to make the movie this long. Yeah. What other movies coming out in March? March? Nothing. They're doing um, exactly. The I wanted you to think. I, I wanted you to think about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, no. It, the Uncharted movie in February is the closest thing to like a bigger movie that's yeah. coming out by itself. It's not. There's nothing. I think, I think Mor- Morbius got pushed back to like mid-April or late April. That's like the next quasi-big release after after this one. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you, Brian, and I'm going to ask you again about another movie. You mentioned the word delayed from Morbius. One of the things that, and I don't think it's going to happen, but you think there's a chance that they delay the Batman? Nope. I don't. I don't think so. Because I think No Way Home proved if you have a, if you have a great product, people are still going to go to the theater. And the reality is, you have not you you have not seen municipalities and national governments shut down theaters this go around. So you've seen some limitations, right? You've seen some mask mandates come back, but you haven't seen the shut down local business the way that you did um, previously. So mm-hmm. I think they're going to go. With this one, I'm, I'm pretty sure at this point they're gonna, they're going to roll, and and you can sort of see that because we're starting to get like the interview circuit is up and running right? like every day, every week now. You got one of the cast is out there doing a doing a pod or doing a Zoom or you know talking to a magazine. So I think they're and they've launched the viral marketing campaign. Looks like they're borrowing a little bit from the Nolan verse. Where like remember the Nolan verse always used to do that like hidden website. Yeah. They're doing that with this film now. Um, the Riddler, so they're kind of doing like riddles that you play online to kind of get nope. loose to the movie. So I, I think that's, that's kind of like, a, hey, hey, we pulled the trigger. We're 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 all, we're moving toward March fifth. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to say, Brian, before we move on, um, I was very disappointed in the poster. Which one? Is the one where he's facing all the rogues? Well, he's he's big, right? And then the rows are behind, and there's like a, yeah. a question mark, and is actual is Bruce Wayne? Yeah, and the, yeah. I I I didn't particularly didn't like, like the, the, the poster. That's 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 they've been strike they've been throwing strike 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 ball. <laughs> All right. Um. Next up. Oh, tell us what you guys think about. The decision of not doing the orange story. Let, let us know in the comment section below. Um, next up. Eternals, Brian, is doing very well on Disney Plus. Do you and you said this in the past? See, we do this is what we do here. We predict stuff. We talk it into existence because it makes sense. <laughs> the Eternals. Um, is doing really well on Disney Plus, and you and you've mentioned in the past that it would be very interesting if they went the route of doing the Disney Plus series for these characters. You can do a lot of stuff with the Eternals. They've been around for what seven thousand years. Yep. We can finally see what happened during the blip for them. We can see some stuff. Your thoughts. Yeah, I'm actually not surprised at this. I think it's like, a, it's one of the, if there is a silver lining to the whole, you know, what's going on with the pandemic and streaming versus theaters, you kind of get to see like where the audience's threshold is, you know, for excitement and appetite. And like this movie, $400 million global gross, you know, uh, it was about 165 US and 235 outside. And obviously that was a disappointment and the reviews weren't great. But like the minute that thing dropped on Disney Plus, all those people who were like, okay, I don't really feel like I need to go see this, but like, I'm going to watch this. Watch it right away. Yeah. I think this movie is going to have a second life. Um, and I think these characters are going to be given a second life because of this. Because as we said, the movie is flawed. 
but it's not without real potential. And there's yeah. definitely some pieces of the movie that are, that are excellent and different. Yeah. So I think that gives you like kind of the building blocks of something. Now, I know uh, Gemma Chan and Richard Madden have both been publicly teasing that the next appearance of their character is already known. I think the Madden one is really interesting, right? Because he's in theory dead. Mm. Spoiler alert. So if he already knows where else he's going to pop up, doesn't that, that suggest that in the timeline, he's there's going to at least show something prior to what we saw in the movie, which could lend itself to, yeah, you could definitely do the Druig season. You could definitely yeah. do the, there's that reference to like, you know, Thana and uh, Gilgamesh kind of going around and picking all the monsters' butts. Like, you could definitely do like little short seasons or anthology. Yeah, or you could, even do, you could even do a film that didn't go to the theater if you want. And I don't think Chloe Zhao would do it. And I don't think they're going to want to bring her back. But, um, but I think this franchise is going to be given life because they're finding out that this is actually something people are very curious about. It just wasn't good enough and didn't have enough buzz to get people to physically go to the theater. I know I've asked this before, but I'm going to ask it differently this time. Do you think people over at Disney are possibly or perhaps mentioning a recut of this film? I hope so. I hope so. Um, you know, actually, like that's one thing I think HBO Max um, does well. If you go on there, all the cuts of movies they have on there are on. So it's like you want to go watch the Lord of the Rings movie. The extended edition is right next to the regular one. If you want to go watch, like you know, the Zack Snyder cut in the original Justice League, as bad as it was, is there? Like, yeah. Don't understand if you have these streaming services, why you're not taking advantage of that and doing things like that. Now, again, would Chloe Zhao do a director's cut on this? I don't know. It sounds like we got the director's cut. So we would need yeah, like yeah, that. That's what I'm we would need about. like the Marvel yeah. edit. We would need the Parliament <laughs> edit. That's what exactly. we would need for this film. The but I'd be all edit. for it. Yeah, I'd be all for it. Because you know there's a lot of other footage that she shot. So like, I'd be and, interested to see a remix. And at the end of the day, like. this is business. Yeah. What you want is eyes on your platform. It can't be just Wednesdays. So, uh, yeah, let us know in this comment section below what you guys think of the of the possibility of the Eternals uh, series coming on uh, to Disney Plus. And are you surprised that Eternals is doing so well on the platform? Let us know in the comment section below. Next up, Doctor Strange 2. Does it have me concerned? Not really. Okay, I want to hear that. Um, you know, the, the, we've always been talking about when it was first mentioned about the reshoots. This reshoots happened. We gave our reasons why, oh, because Spider Man No Way Home and blah, 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 blah and all the story changed. We, we got to do this because of this and all this stuff. The connectivity of all these films really put a, a snag in your, in, in your, in, I guess, in your timeline of when you want things done. Especially if something like comes up with like a dope idea, like, oh, we got to film that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> add that, you got to add that beat. You got to add that beat. Anyway. Hey, I believe when in the, in the, I think in the article that you sent regarding the reshoots and Sam Raimi talking about working, how working with Marvel is great or whatever, you know what I'm saying? The opposite of what happens over at Warner Brothers. He uh, stated that, you know, they're committed in producing and delivering a film that everybody's going to love and, and they want to make sure it's perfect and they go all out. So I believe him. Therefore, I'm not too concerned. Brian, you are concerned. Why? A little bit. Uh, the, the reshoots, for the most part, I understood because you changed directors. 
Um, and then as we know, the chronology of the film release has also changed with No Way Home coming before this movie instead of the other way around. And then you also had the element of what one division kind of launched into. Uh, so I kind of understood up to a point why, you, why there'd be a fair amount you might want to recut. I was a little bit concerned by Sam Raimi's characterization because someone asked him, is the film finished? And he's like, I don't know. I hope so. Like we just finished our cut. But then he's like, we still got to look and we might have to do more pickups and other shots. And it, that made me a little more nervous of like, yeah. it just felt like a, a little uncertainty about what he had content wise and whether he had actually gotten what he wanted um, in the reshoots. That made me a little more nervous. The other thing that made me a little bit nervous was there was there's increasing rumors that something we talked about previously might be actually happening. And that's like the alternate Avengers teams. Like, yeah that they might be spending some time on some celebrity cameos, you know, and kind of showing you alternate Avengers. And I just, I don't know. I just, I worry about that stuff bogging down the movie to get a couple laughs and a couple of, you know, viral moments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean. And I worry that No Way Home emboldened them to oh, do yeah, yeah, more yeah. of it. Absolutely, 100% I agree with that. That's what I was thinking, like, you know, after this, they just uh, cameos. The thing is cameos now, right? <laughs> like, how many cameos can we get in a movie now? <laughs> and this is the movie to do it, right? This is your one opportunity yeah. to do it, really. Like, because it doesn't make sense anywhere, anywhere else, or any, you know, it just makes sense to do it here if you're gonna do it. So let's see how they do it if they do it in the smart way they did it with uh, No Way Home. My concern, Brian, I think this is my only real concern is that, you know, so often when we do reshoots, you can notice it. True. Sure. I hope we don't notice it because it, it pulls you out of the, that world a little bit. If you, if you can notice where things are different, you know what I'm saying? And people, I'm pretty sure people are going to be looking out for that. Hopefully they do it in a way that's, very seamless and that we, we see, you know, we see a complete film and not uh, uh, like someone put a puzzle together all messed up, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So yeah, let us know in the conversation below what you guys think of uh, Doctor Strange 2 and it's reshoots as it finishes and not finished. Are you excited for it? Let us know in the conversation below. Our last topic, and we're going to break this down into three parts real quick. We got three Spider-Men. Not all of them are on board. Two out of the three. I think the other one is negotiating. He started his negotiations a while back after this movie came out. That's when he started his negotiations for him coming back to the Spider-Man role. The other two are all for it. One, I think, is... I guess sort of reliving the, the glory days of him being Spider-Man and he's like, he would probably, he, he wouldn't mind doing it again. The other one, he's overwhelmed with the praise that he's gotten for his portrayal in No Way Home and people want to see it again and he'll come back for the right purpose for the, or, for, or for the right script. So Tobey Maguire recently said, you know, and I'm paraphrasing here. He, he, he's, he's not done. They're not done with uh, Tobey Maguire Spider Man. What, were you, what, what do you think when he, or what were you thinking about when he said that? What, what came into your, your head? Uh, my thought was they must have offered him a lot more money than he could make playing poker because <laughs> I mean, this is a guy who like, wasn't acting. Poker money. <laughs> I'm just saying, but this is a guy who wasn't acting for years yeah. because he was in cards. Like he's supposedly yeah. legit as a, as a card player. Yeah. So for him to then all of a sudden not just come back in, in, in a limited role in one movie, but to be now being like, hey, I'm going to come back to franchise filmmaking. Yeah. Like, not a lot of people have done that. Yeah. And so it makes me, I, he was the most surprising that like, yeah. A, he wanted to do it. And B, there was like, oh, we got a plan for this. So I'm like, really? Like, yeah. I don't know. How to do this. Yeah. I mean, I guess I'll believe that one when I see it. Um, but I also didn't feel like the audience was necessarily 
clamoring for a new Tobey Maguire Spider-Man the way they were asking for Andrew Garfield. So I don't know how they intend to use him. But if he's going to be, I guess, what he was in this movie, like a couple of times, you know, maybe yeah, that could be. I mean, he could be looking at like, hey, what Downey became, you know, in the MCU. I think a lot of people are looking at that. being like, that guy's getting paid 50 million a pop. <laughs> He pops up for like four days of work, three days of work. You know, he's on the poster. Like, maybe that's what everyone's going for now, that kind of model. Because I can't believe Tommy McGuire's going to be like, all right, I'm going to get back in shape and I'm going to be like doing four month, five month shoots on a new Spider Man movie. Yeah. But how old he is, 50 something? No way. Like, yeah. no way. I mean, it'll be interesting to see what the, his, that life that he's living as Spider Man still is like. Um, but two things. I don't think he's yet made it to the last table of the World Series of Poker just yet. No, no. Had, he, had he done so, I think he, we wouldn't be talking about this. Um, so he's re-upping again. <laughs> um, uh, and... You know, the, uh, another thing that comes along with this is that, you know, you're a celebrity now. You like, you like, you know how, he, you know, he don't like being walking around and you taking his picture and like that ain't, Tony McGuire ain't about that he'll fight you, you know? And so he has to be cool. We, we can't have, what's this dude's name? Ezra Miller situation, right? A more severe oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> incident, oh, you know oh. what I'm saying? Yeah. But we can't have Toby do something crazy. You know, so he has to be cool with it, at least somewhat cool and, and, and smile for the cameras. And people just have to respect his space when he's in private time. But he has to be out there again. And just if the cameras are on you, that's just what it is. Um, Andrew Garfield, we already talked about him and. You know, he's all for it, but it has to be right because the last two films or well, the second film mostly wasn't right. He didn't want to go out like that. I didn't want him to go out like that. And you know, in order for, in order for you to get him, you got it's not about the money for him. Is you know, obviously money is important, but he's he just wants to do something dope. And so I hope they give that to him. Your thoughts? I think it's gonna happen. I think it's gonna happen. I think I think he brought it obviously in, in this movie. Audiences responded. I think the studio, you know, it will leverage that. Whether they follow our suggestion or not, we'll see. But like, I think, I think that one's gonna happen. And I think because that there, I sense the actor and the studio want it. And if that's yeah. any audience is behind it, that usually results in something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like you said, what a month ago, maybe this could be the transition that you 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 bring in Miles Morales, and now he's. In his own world, you don't have to worry about Avengers. Or it's Miles Morales. That's it. And I, certainly people are going to come to see that. People have been wanting this forever now. Ever since um, Into the Spider-Verse. That's a billion dollar movie. <sighs> you got a good director and a good writer. And Andrew Garfield's doing the mentor and the handoff to Miles Morales intro. That's a billion dollar movie. Yo, Brian. Andrew Garfield, he's... He's he's fantastic at what he does, yo. He's a he is amazing at what he does, and he has that 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 swag to pull it off, you know. And that relationship, the way he forms his relationships, whether good or bad, you see that he cares. You know, like like you know he cared for Uncle Ben. You know he cared. You you, you feel that. Because he delivers that that type of performance, and for him to do it with Miles Morales and and sort of show him along is like you you know, that's a that's that's easily a billion dollar movie. I, I can't see anything else other than them doing this. That's it's just too easy. Um, and now you have the negotiator. <laughs> no, not. Um, Samuel L. Jackson, which was a great movie, by the way. Oh, shout out to, yeah, Kevin. Well, can we, yeah, can we, can we, can we, can we, can we editing out his co star from that movie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, right. uh, Sheesh. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
That movie hasn't come on ever since that. Yeah, you know, and that was a good movie. It's not. I don't think you ever seen see usual that. suspects. You don't see none of that, nope. yo. Nope. That's a, that's a shame. It'll come back though. It'll come back though. Um, I think he's. I think he's working. I think he's working. I think I. That's what I, I. Oh, he's making a comeback. I don't. Know, I don't know what that looks like, but he's gonna put himself out there. But anyway, the negotiator Tom Holland. He's been negotiating for a minute. I'm not going to, you know, I can't see myself at 30 being Spider-Man. If I am, I've done something wrong. Um, I'm sure he has been very um, flattered by the praise this movie has gotten. That last scene with him and, 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 his forgotten friends um, was was fantastic. One of the best parts of that film. Um, there are some moments where he's sort of hinting that he'll come back, but he, yeah, this, but huh? He's a hundred percent coming back. Yeah, 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 yeah. The question I is, I come back with it. He's going to get the Downey deal. That's what he, that's what he, <laughs> yeah, he wants yeah, the back yeah. end, man. He wants the back end. Like, in fairness to him, like he got paid $4 million for No Way Home. Listen, $4 million, nothing to stop. But in the grand scheme of what some of the paydays have been oh, yeah. for his co-stars, $4 million is not that much. And he's, yeah. got, he's got the biggest non-Avengers movie. He's been in all the biggest, technically, not the star, but he's yeah. been in all the biggest movies. Yeah, it's like, yeah. I don't yeah. blame him for wanting that. But here's the thing. Name one thing that Tom Holland has done that is critically acclaimed and commercially successful that has not been Spider-Man. He needs one, like he like Downey has Sherlock. He's uncharted, he's hoping, but I'm just pointing out he yeah. doesn't have so Toby Maguire, Andrew Garfield have a resume that extends well beyond Peter Parker and Spider-Man. They don't need Peter Parker and Spider-Man be successful as actors. It's not clear to us yet that Tom Holland is a bankable actor when he's not playing Peter Parker. And so for him to walk away from the part, it's a hollow threat and the studio knows it. <laughs> he needs the part. He needs yeah, yeah. the part to be on the yeah, A-list. Yeah. Right? Again, it's an easy billion dollars. It's like, well, how, you, how do you bet against it? You know, that's the guarantee. It's just, yeah. If I, you know, if I were Tom Holland, I'd be like, yo, let me see what let me see. Hey, yo, he's gonna call Rob. Yo, let me tell me about this deal. What, what? Let's let me come over to your house. Let's break it down. Fifty million. How do I get my fifty million dollars? That's what he, you know what I'm saying. And then he's gonna be like, "Yo, let me get that contract. Let's look at that contract and see what we can improve upon it." Yeah, exactly. you know what I'm saying. Yeah, because it's easy billion dollars. Easy for not just one movie. For perhaps two or three. Yep. You know, so you got to pay the man if that's what he's asking for. And he's negotiating. He's doing, you know, at, at some point it's going to be like, hey, yo, chill. Or let's talk. Let's talk. If they, perhaps he's doing it because he hasn't gotten that phone call yet. So we'll see. Um, But yeah, Brian, you think, all, I think we've pretty much agreed that they're all going to come back. Except yeah, for Toby, totally. Toby, Toby's probably the one that I'm just not convinced. I'm not Toby's the only one I'm not convinced will be like the yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah so let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of uh, the future of the Spider Man. The one I'm most looking forward to seeing is Andrew Garfield's and what they do after that. And I guess the second most is uh, Tom Holland's. I, I want to see what this world looks like with nobody knowing who Peter Parker was and him we having to reacclimate into that name into people's minds right so it's just fascinating what they can do there and I, I just hope they treat him right and then give him what he, he deserves and let's move on with our lives right um yeah that's our show for the day um, I hope you guys enjoyed the topics today. I really enjoyed it. Brian, any last words? No, it was a good one. It was a good one.
for the next yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Please hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Share it with your friends. And if you have something to say, please say it. We want to have this uh, back and forth with you. And, you know, as long as we're respectful and, you know, um, and you love the genre, just let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of this, of all the things that's happening with the Batman, Spider-Man, all this stuff. Because this is like, yo, this is the nerd generation, man. Back in the day, you couldn't call, you could only talk to a few people about tech. You can only talk a few people about comedy. You had a click. Not everybody's talking about it. now it's all about tech. Now it's all about the comic books. Isn't that crazy? The nerd generation. We'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report.